Skywatch Media News for the last week of May 2021. Our sun is waking up from its deep slumber, as evident by the most recent flurry of explosive activity. Back on May the 20th, I reported that the U.S. was bracing for a solar superstorm that could knock out telecommunications services on Earth. On May 22nd, just two days following that alert, a sunspot named AR-2824 unleashed a sequence of solar flares, unlike anything the Earth has experienced in over a decade. In a period of 24 hours, the Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded a total of 10 C-class flares and 2 M-class flares. The multiple explosions hurled overlapping coronal mass ejections into space. On May 26, one of those dense CMEs struck the Earth's magnetic field, creating a G2-class geomagnetic storm. A solar storm of this magnitude can lead to weak power grid fluctuations and can also have an impact on satellite operations. The effects of the most recent solar disruption were manifest as it created intense solar radio interference across a large swath of the North American continent. According to a shortwave radio operator in New Mexico, the radio burst was so loud that it actually flooded out lightning static from a localized severe thunderstorm. The noisy signal created by the solar flare frenzy was recorded via a radio telescope located in rural New Mexico. The high pitch generated by the powerful solar flare is evident as the frequency becomes distorted about 15 seconds into the recording. The radio burst coincided with a dynamic M1.4 class solar flare. According to the radio operator, there were strong solar radio emissions present at all frequencies. To emphasize how intense this solar flare actually was, the noise generated by the emission could be heard at midnight by radio operators located in the Arctic, as seen here. The outburst was recorded from the Polar Light Center, located in Lofoten, Norway. The reason why this disturbance appears to be so significant is that a radio burst of this magnitude can only be received during daylight hours from the Arctic. In the Lofoten Islands, the sun is just below the horizon near midnight during the month of May. Even though the sun has not yet risen in the islands, the event was still detected, which indicates a solar disturbance of immense proportions took place. As a result of the solar disturbance, waves of ionization rippled through the Earth's upper atmosphere, leading to moderate and widespread radio blackouts over North America within the last week. What this actually means is that radio operators are seeing unusual propagation in frequencies caused by shock waves and electron beams moving through the sun's atmosphere in the aftermath of these strong flares. I recently mentioned that the governments of this world are woefully prepared for solar storms and the effects of solar particles, which can expand the Earth's magnetosphere, making it more difficult for satellite signals to penetrate. The U.S. placed solar flares on the National Risk Assessment List in the year 2011, and yet little has been done to prepare. According to previous solar studies, the sun releases an extreme solar flare every 25 years on average, the last one occurring in 1989 when massive power outages took place across Quebec, Canada, as well as burning out U.S. transformers. 
So it looks as if we are overdue for the next big solar storm. It could happen at any time, and the effects could be more than what any of us can handle. So buckle up. We are in for a long, bumpy ride. Did you happen to witness the appearance of the super blood moon in the early morning hours of May 26th? Sky watchers in the western U.S. were treated to one of the greatest spectacles of the year as the moon dipped into the Earth's shadows, creating a blood-red eclipse. The recent lunar eclipse coincided with a supermoon, which was then confronted by a solar storm that was bombarding the Earth's magnetosphere with a solar flare not seen in years. In unison, these powerful celestial events stunned the world. There will be another lunar eclipse during the third week of November of this year. However, this eclipse will be partial. It's called a half-blood moon. A full 97% of the full moon is expected to enter Earth's dark shadow in November, and therefore it will turn a reddish color, and it will be visible to all of North America. The next total lunar eclipse is scheduled for May 16, 2022 and it is expected to last for 1 hour and 24 minutes, and it will be visible in both North and South America. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always keep looking to the sky.